Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. Today we're going to be talking about creativity and imagination. So I have a guest with me today, Vince Didato. Welcome, Vince. Thanks, Tony. Good to be with you. You probably know Vince by now, but in case you don't, I'm going to introduce him. Vince is the founder of the Didato Counseling Center. He is an author who wrote the book, Awakening to the Goodness of God. He is a licensed marriage and family therapist, a public speaker, an ordained minister, but most importantly, he's my brother. So you may have heard him on a number of, we've probably done half a dozen podcasts now and a couple of videos on my YouTube channel. So we're going to do a deep dive today into the idea of how the Holy Spirit assists us in creativity, how God can communicate with us, whether we recognize it or not, but also what the Bible says so that we don't get into anything that is not consistent with the Bible. We want to stay consistent with the Bible and yes. not get in any into any murky territory. But there's a lot of accessibility that that God wants to give us that most people don't use. Would you agree with that? I sure would. So Vince, why would a person want to learn how to access the the presence of God or the Holy Spirit in their daily life? What would come to mind for me is a few different things. And I'm going to share like over the years, certain verses, just like with you, Tony, I really like it when you share certain verses and how they impacted you. And please feel free to add at any point what I am saying. But one of my favorite ones is in Isaiah 55, verse 8. And the Lord says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. But as high as the heavens are above the earth, so far are my thoughts above your thoughts and your ways above my ways. Then in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, when Paul's writing, he says, who can know the mind of God except God, basically? And so the Lord reveals those things to us, the mind of God, through the Spirit. So those two verses, one from the old, one from the new, would say, hey, good luck hearing the mind or the heart of God unless you go above and beyond where you have gone before. And it's going to be outside of what you can work up or think of. You're going to have to enter in with the Spirit of God to get to that place. Well, that makes sense. And if you think about it at a human level, one mistake, especially like people who are partners run into is they think they can read the other one's mind. They think they know what the other one is saying. And a lot of times it's not even in the same, you know, like planet or universe. So unless I am willing to communicate, the other person won't know what I mean or what I'm saying or what my motives are. And unless I'm willing to listen, I won't know what's going on with them. So I find too, Vince, that people, many, many, many people pray, but a lot of people don't really know how to listen or how to recognize when the Lord is trying to give them a creative idea or a strategy or a solution 
or sometimes a caution, like watch out, you know, that this isn't good. You know, that there's lots of ways that God communicates with us, but if we don't realize he's doing so, we'll miss it. Yeah. And let me add to that. I like that example. And Tony, probably almost any Christian denomination, no matter what denomination you are, or if you go to, let's see, what's that store where they sell knickknacks? Oh, Hobby Lobby? Yes, that's it. Okay, you've probably seen plaques after plaques after statues that have the verse Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And if, if you stop and think about what it's saying, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So that's suggesting, guess what? He won't direct your path because you figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have some outside help to figure that out. So I just want to remind people, too, in John chapter 10. I mean, I wrote down a bunch of scriptures that, uh -huh. that say that the Lord wants to speak to us, that he speaks to our hearts. In John chapter 10, I think there's two different verses where Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. So it's it's the idea that the Lord wants to speak to us. And Which is the sheep, title of one of your books. Yes, it is. Not the one that's showing in the background. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was my first devotional book. Uh -huh. That And a sheep follows the shepherd. So if we want to follow and if we want to hear him, he will find a way to speak to us. And then it also says in Psalms 85, verse 8, that he speaks peace to us. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, I actually read this a couple of weeks ago in a podcast. Hmm. It talks about how he is kind of complaining and praying to the Lord. And then he says, I'm going to wait and see how he answers me in That's my right. heart. That's right. That's right. So Psalm 5, verse 3 in Amplified says, in the morning, you hear my voice, O Lord. So again, that's prayer we're talking. And I will watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. I love that verse. I love that verse. Yes. So it gets back to that idea that we, you know, we can communicate, we can pray, but we also need to be still and read the, read the Bible have time in God's presence so that he can answer us. You know, it's just like with people, if you are running out the door, shouting something at somebody, you know, <laughs> saying goodbye or whatever, it's like, well, they might hear you, but if they answer you, you're not going to hear them. Yeah, and so, you know, even a, even like a drive through, you have to slow down long enough to get something back. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I like that one. You don't just shout what like your order into the microphone. You got to like sit there and wait. Yes, so, I mean, those are silly. But the idea is that no transaction occurs without some waiting and some, you know, like mutual investment. Yeah. So, so you had another thought about the importance of waiting and yielding our hearts in order to hear. Yeah, Tony, and I believe you're familiar with this. I think 20 or 25 years ago, I was reading a book by uh, Rick Joyner. Who... So I wanted to hear what he had to say about different things. And he had this devotional book. And it never occurred to me before, but he quoted Proverbs 25, 2, that says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search out a matter. So I tied that into because the Lord wants us to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. There are certain things he requires us to pursue him. So as you were saying with the drive through we have to wait for him and pursue the truth, pursue what he's saying, kind of like at times putting a jigsaw puzzle together. He will let us at times take time to pursue, to put a puzzle together, which at times may include seeking the counsel of other people, reading someone else's book, going to a commentary, many different things to get his thoughts because he wants us to love him with all our heart. So that's another reason why we want to hear the spirit. That's right. And in case somebody thinks, well, that's not fair, 
if you think mm. about again your relationship with a partner or a say a child, if they only want to talk to you when they want you to give them ten dollars, <laughs> you know. I need $10 for lunch or whatever. And then they're done with you. It's like, that's not a relationship. And so God is really, he wants a connection with us. He doesn't want just, he's not just barking rules at us, which may be how you, it's how we were raised to see God. Right. Um, he, he wants a relationship. And so he wants to be pursued a little bit. And also we go deeper when we have to pursue when we have to pray, there have been some questions I've had where I've been seeking the Lord for a few weeks and I don't have an answer yet, but mm -hmm. I know as if I keep pursuing him, I've asked you to pray about, you know, I'm trying to make sort of a, a decision. It's not a huge decision, but I want it's to a do the right one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important. And so that is a process. It's not yes. like a vending machine. You put in a dollar and your Bible verse comes out. It's it's a relationship and it's cultivated. And anything with depth takes time. So Vince, I want to pivot a little bit into this idea of sanctified imagination. Okay. The, the title of your book is Awakening to the Goodness of God. Stirring up holy imagination. Yeah. Thank you. But I have to mention yours since you mentioned mine. Okay. I want to read a little bit from one verse from Ephesians that I, I assume you're that's from. Yes, <clears throat> that's right. And then I want to want to talk about ways that God has used imagery that actually prompted you to write that book. So this time I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. And this is Ephesians chapter one. Verse 18, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Another, another verse might say, another translation might say the eyes of your heart, flooding yes. you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us. And I pray that you would continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. So we see that he wants us to know hope. He wants us to be able to access his power. And he uses it by flooding our hearts with his revelation. Yes. And so we need to know how to access that because that's where we get strategy, where we get wisdom where we can find peace and where we can be energized with power. So do you want to talk about how you chose that title for your book and the ways that God has spoken to you through that imagination that is quickened by the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And Tony, the verse that you quoted there, the Ephesians 1.18. So this is quoted in my book. So I'm going to read the little section that I wrote after that verse that you just quoted, the Ephesians 1.18. You can think of imagination as the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or not previously known or experienced. So since we are made in the image of God, and in Romans 4, it says God is the one who is able to call into being what does not exist. So we can conclude then that God first imagines what he's going to create, mm -hmm. and then he calls forth what was previously not known or experienced to the senses, and a different or a new reality opens up. So because the Holy Spirit reveals to us the mind of God, it says in 1 Corinthians 2, and God is an imaginative, creative God that mm -hmm. creates and forms and shapes things that are not yet into existence out of his imagination, and his thoughts and ways are above and beyond our own, and he created us in his image, then now through the Holy Spirit living within us, we have that capacity now through the thoughts and the mind of God, which he gives to us, to now imagine 
what we have not been able to imagine before or see and understand, which is where the word revelation comes in. It's like an uncovering of something that was there, but you didn't understand or know before. And so now we have that capacity, as that verse is saying, our imaginations are awakened or enlightened or uh, free now to be in communion with how God thinks and feels and understands things. Wow. That's, that's really powerful. God, if you believe that God created the world, he's not done creating. He's continuing to create, and at, we can become part of that creative flow, yes. not in a not in a weird way or a way that brings attention and glamour to ourselves. Like you know, if you're like some big rap star or you know whatever, that imagination and creativity in some way should not be all about us. It should in some way point back to God's goodness, God's power, God's love, the truth of who God is, not to come up with new ways to do things that are evil. Right. Or new Go ahead. Let me speak into that because you're almost saying exactly what James 3.17 says. Because then if a person says, well, if you allow that, how do you know that this is coming from God? And of course, there's a few different things. And you have talked about those things in your podcast before. But that verse 317 says, now the wisdom that comes from above, here's how you'll know what it looks like. It's pure. It's peaceable, meaning ultimately it is for the good of the people that this wisdom is coming to. I'm going to skip. But the last one, it says, and without hypocrisy. And in the Amplified Version, without hypocrisy is listed as, so it's without self-righteousness and self-serving. So that wisdom, ultimately, if it comes from God, it will not be a self-righteous, that means a condemning, critical, uh, legalistic, religious viewpoint, nor will it be something that serves the person who is presenting it. Because as we know, Tony, there are many creative outlets of things that are not good, yeah. but they are very creative and entertaining and interesting, but they would not be the wisdom from above because they're self-serving, they're not pure, they don't bring peace. So as you were saying, there's some clarity as to how we know those things that come from God. Yeah, so it takes some discernment and you just because something is spiritual doesn't mean it is from God. It doesn't mean that uh, right. it's consistent with God's word. So we do have to make some distinctions. But if it's narcissistic, it's not from God. Now we will enjoy using our gifts and I love creating. That's right. But in our own hearts, we know whether we are turning people to us or whether we are enjoying the creative process in a way that is consistent with how God does things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's become very, very difficult for people to make distinctions within culture, within entertainment, even within re the religious community mm -hmm. that we should be cautious, but we don't want to shut down every aspect of the supernatural because you could make a mistake. That is true. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that is what a lot, a lot of what happens. Yes. Yes, that's right. What a great interview with Vince. I learned a lot myself. So I'm going to put a link to his website where you can learn more about him read his blog, or pick up a copy of his book. Now, let me pray a blessing for us to close us out. Lord, I do pray that you would illuminate the eyes of this listener's heart as they read your word, as they pray, as they take time to listen for how you want to answer them, that you would 
increase their level of spiritual understanding, of strategy, and their ability to receive revelation from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, would you share it with a friend? Talk to you next time.